All right, let's start with um, let's start with prayer, and then we'll get into it. So, Lord, we just thank you for the, your word. We just thank you, Lord God, for Lord that uh, in your word is everything that we need for life and godliness. Everything, Lord, to help us navigate the days ahead. So, Lord, as we just come before your word, we just thank you, Lord, for so many things that you've said about where we're heading and what's happening right now. And, Lord, we can um, go have our lives guided by your Holy Spirit and by your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So we're talking about how to navigate the days ahead. So just going to, uh, for those who weren't here last week. Okay, this is not working. There it is. Okay, there it is. Um, just for those who, who missed out on last week, we talked about um, faith. Uh, Jesus said a very, very interesting thing. He said, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? And uh, we discussed that last week. And uh, interesting enough, that means that there will be, there'll be a lack of faith. The Bible even talks that many people will, will fall away. And um, so really now is the time to be walking by faith. Amen. And when I was, um, when I was a young boy and grew up in church and used to hear about end times, I, I realised that there would be a day that would come where we would just purely have to walk by faith um, you know, to, for our provision, for our protection. And so we looked at uh, four of the different people that um, Jesus you know, commended for their faith and saw that this is what we'll need for the days ahead. The faith of the woman with the two mites that gives all knowing that God provides. See, that was the amazing thing. They were rich there. They gave from their abundance. She gave from everything, um, believing on that God would provide for her. The faith of the centurion with, the, with confidence and authority. He was the one who said that his servant needed to be healed and Jesus said, well, he could come. He said, no, you don't need to. You just say the word and it'll be healed. And so that just that confidence and authority in faith, Jesus commended. The faith of the paralytic friends in unprecedented times, they used unprecedented faith. And Gavin was saying, I don't like to use that word, it gets thrown around. But I mean, when somebody's breaking through your roof, to lay it down someone to get Jesus to heal them. That's pretty unprecedented. They, they said the crowd were amazed that seen nothing like it. And not only is that you going to need to have your faith strong, but you need to be around strong people of faith as well. Amen. This talks about community. Because if we go through, I don't know about you, I'm the same, but there are times when I feel like I'm up in the mountain with my faith, and sometimes I feel like I can hardly even get my head off the pillow. And so, you know, that's when we need to be real with each other, let each other know what we're going through and say, hey, can you pray with me and, and, um, and, and bring our faith together and work as um, community. Um, the faith of the woman with the issue of blood who pushed through all the barriers to see her breakthrough. And, uh, and also the faith of the Canaanite woman who was desperate and pers persistent and wouldn't take no for an answer. And finally, trusting in your Heavenly Father who knows all you need well before you do and will make a way. Um, so I also put this slide up last week, which was very interesting. I just about, my jaw just about dropped on the ground when I actually saw this on social media, um, because this was just before, um, you know, you guys who were here last week but weren't, um, this was actually just before the um, uh, meeting in Davos of the World Economic Forum. And um, the headline was, um, you know, this Klaus Schwab who runs it pledges the world that they can find salvation at Davos 2022. And then the headline was famines, floods, pestilence, drought, plague, war and rumours of war. These are the key issues facing the world today and the only, the, the invitation only World Economic Forum next week in Switzerland is just the place to find the answers provided by the select globalist elite um, founder Klaus Schwab. In other, in other words, They've taken this straight out of the Bible, but they say, we'll be our saviour. We'll be the ones who will actually um, help you. But we know that's not true. <laughs> so uh, before we get to this scripture, you're going to hear words in scripture where Jesus is saying things like this. These things I've spoken that you sh should not be made to stumble. So isn't it great? Jesus actually said words so that when we came to the time, and this is in context of what we're talking about, Jesus actually spoke things in the Word of God so that when the time comes, we wouldn't stumble. Isn't that amazing? I'm so thankful. He could have said to the, you know, to them when um, they were asking what are the signs of the time, like, oh, don't worry about that. You know, like, 
you'll be fine. He said, no, I'm actually going to tell you so you know. Another thing he said, remember the words that I said to you. So, you know, when we, when we get, we, which we are now, we're actually living our prophecy. We're living out the words of the Bible so that what we can do is go, hey, Jesus said that. You know, when class swap says, oh, there's going to be wars and rumours of wars, we can say, no, someone else already said that 2,000 years ago. <laughs> That's not surprising. You're just saying it's here now and you want to be the answer. There's an answer. Jesus has given us the answer. And this is what we're going to talk about. The other thing he's, you'll see in Scripture today is he said, but these things I've told you that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you them. Isn't that great? Jesus said these things 2,000 years ago so we would remember, so we would look at something. So, for instance, when uh, you know, we were in the middle of the pandemic and then there was like, uh, well, you know, only certain people could buy and sell things and others couldn't, I thought, I remember that. <laughs> I remember that's in the Word of God. When, when you hear wars and rumours of wars, I'm like, I remember that. Jesus said about that. And so the wonderful thing is that he's told us these things so that when we start to experience them, we can actually look back and go, actually, you told us about that. But not only did he tell us it was coming, there's words of encouragement in amongst it as well. Amen? About how to uh, navigate that. So, so we got up to here. Um, can we go back one? Go back one scripture? Yeah. So Jesus said this, Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there'll be great earthquakes in various places, famines and pestilence, and there'll be fearful sights and great signs in the heavens. Um, Matthew says wars and rumours of wars. And of course, you know, over time there have been you know, nations fighting against nations and earthquakes and all these things. But in Revelation, it actually says that these things will take place shortly, which means when they start, they will actually happen quickly. So who knows? There's like an intensity. And, and, and Jesus said that they're birth pangs. What happens about birth pangs? You know, they get become more intense before the, before the birth. Amen. They, they actually increase in, um, in how often they're actually happening, but they also increase in intensity. And so we can look back and go, well, yeah, there have been wars before and there's been earthquakes before, but there's a frequency and an intensity that is happening now that hasn't happened before. Amen? Would you say amen to that? Yes. And so we start to look at them. We go, well, okay. Jesus said related that to birth pains, which means... The end is coming, yeah, the end of the pregnancy is coming because the intensity is happening. So then when we get down to Luke 21, verse 12, it says, it says these, But before all these things they will lay hands on you, they will persecute you, deliver you up to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. But it will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony. Therefore settle it in your hearts not to meditate um, beforehand on what you will answer for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. Then the next um, verse and it goes on and says you will be betrayed even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends and they'll put some of you to death and you'll be hated by all for my name's sake but not a hair on your head shall be lost. So it's interesting because now he's talking about persecution will come and so there's two lots of persecution. There was a persecution from religious leaders and government authorities, because it says you'll be delivered up by, um, to synagogues and prisons, but you'll also be brought before kings and rulers. So, so he talked about this persecution. And again, we've seen persecution before. In fact, um, you know, we've, we know that that happens in other parts of the world. We've started to see that persecution here, but again, these signs will actually increase in intensity and frequency. But look at what, there's a beautiful promise in verse 14, or actually in verse 13 and 14, just that sandwiched in between. So first it talks about you'll be persecuted with religious leaders and authorities, and you'll be persecuted by family and friends. But sandwiched in between that is this beautiful promise, and it um, starts in verse 13. It says, it will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony. Isn't that great? Didn't that happen to Joseph? Was it Joseph was persecuted? Yeah, he was, they actually tried to kill him. It was actually one of his brothers that said, well, let's just sell him off to slavery instead. But they actually wanted to kill him. And then he actually, actually ended up in Egypt, a long way around, and became the prime minister of, of the, the known world at that time. 
And then when he finally got his brothers and family to come round, they, they thought they were going to get killed. <laughs> they thought, oh, no, look at the one we tried to kill is actually the prime minister. And he said, no, what, what the enemy intended for evil, God intended for good. Amen. So isn't that wonderful? Because even in the midst of this saying, hey, this is going to happen, it says it will turn out as a, a, a testimony. And then this beautiful promise in verse 14 says, therefore settle it in your heart um, not to meditate beforehand on what you'll answer. That's, that's probably a hard one for me. <laughs> I'm the sort of guy that like, you know, if I've, if I've got to go and talk to someone, I'm going to think about everything they're going to say. I'm going to think about every rebuttal that I'm going to have. I'm going to look at every obstacle and see how I'm going to get around it. And I'm going to have it all worked out as much as I can. I'm going to do all the research to think what's going to happen. So I'll have a decent answer in reply. And you know what? The Holy Spirit's saying, I don't want you to do that. <laughs> and I'm like, oh no. Because he says, I will give you a mouth and wisdom which your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. Isn't that amazing? What an amazing promise. And you know what? That's the Holy Spirit. That's what Jesus' answer, you know, class one will ne never give you this answer as a way to get through what's going ahead. Jesus gave an answer and it's the Holy Spirit. Amen. And here's the wonderful thing. We can get very caught up in everything that's going on. You know, we can look on the news and go, okay, now it's the bees, that there's a the mite, and then that's going to cause more food, food shortage. And we can look, get very involved in everything that's going on. But Jesus actually accept, said to us already, there's stuff that's going to happen, and it's going to get worse, and it's going to get more intense, and it's actually going to get more frequent. So there's two ways we can look at this. We can actually look at something today and then tomorrow go, oh no, it's even worse than it was yesterday. It's even worse today than it was a year ago. But Jesus' answer is the Holy Spirit. Amen? Yeah. To look to the Holy Spirit because no matter what happens, no matter how bad it gets out there, the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you through everything that is now and is to come that we don't even see what's around the corner. Amen? He is the one, that's the wonderful thing that Jesus did when he left, is he left us the Holy Spirit to guide us and to help us. And right here he's saying, guess what? It's going to happen, guys. You're going to be faced with um, people who want to put you in prison, religious leaders who are going to be against you. You're going to have kings or rulers that are going to be against you, even family members that are going to be against you. But guess what? I don't even want you to work out how, you know, with your wisdom how you're going to address it. I will give you the wisdom at the time and it will befound them. It will actually totally contradict and resist them because it's a wisdom that doesn't come from here. It's a wisdom that comes from here. Amen? Well, isn't that a beautiful promise? Such a beautiful promise. Um, John, John 15 verse 18 says, If the world hates you, know that it hated me before it hated you. If you are of the world and the, and, and would love it, um, the world would love its own, but because you're not of the world, I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. So don't be surprised, you know. Um, actually, we're going to read in a minute. They hated Jesus without a cause. Don't be surprised if you're hated without a cause. They don't need a cause, you know. The reason is, is because you're not of the world. Yes. Because you're not part of the world, because part of this system, then hate comes because, you, because you're not part of this. And, and it happened to Jesus. And then he's, now look, verse 20. Remember the word that I said to you. Amen? Amen? Remember this. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecute me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. You know, just your presence actually expose a sin in their life. You know, we've, Brenda and I have been in shopping. I don't know if it's ever happened to you, but we've been in a shopping centre or something, and then you just get this, you know, this glare, or you get, you know, it's the spirit in you. You know, the, um, the spirit in us brings, um, uh, brings life and brings death. And for those who are actually of a different spirit, they know what's going on. And you can get a reaction with just by walking somewhere because you are a son of God. Amen. And the spirit in them knows the spirit that's in you. Um, yeah, we've been in 
uh, you know, markets and you'll hear some music and your inside will just churn because you know there's something spiritual going on, you know, that's of the other spirit going on there. I love walking through all the past the clairvoyance tents and that because I just start praying in the spirit and muck up their channel or whatever is going on. <laughs> Actually, I, um, I was talking to a pastor the other day and, um, and he said something about, I don't know, wanting, wanting to read his wife something um, and then he, and he said, no, don't do, don't do me. And he goes, this has never happened before. I'm not getting anything. And he goes, I'll tell you why you're not getting anything, because what I've got is different than what you've got. And he was actually, it was a testimony. He started um, preaching to it. And so there is, that's a spiritual battle, amen. And then the, the spirit of the world is not the spirit that we have. And so the world will hate you just because of that. And then the next verse in um, 23 it says, he who hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have seen and also hated me and my father. But this happened that the word might be fulfilled which is written in the law. They hated me without a cause. Don't be surprised if that happens. It's just a spiritual thing. Amen. If anything, go home and rejoice. Because the the spirit that is you, that in you is greater than him that's in the world, amen. And then I love this next scripture: the Holy Spirit. When the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you, the Spirit of Truth. I love that. You know what's so hard to find these days is the truth. <laughs> yeah, Jesus is the truth. But there's so so many different things out there that it's very very hard to know really what's truth and what isn't. And things can be doctored up. I mean, I've seen that some of the images that we're actually getting from the Ukraine and from war didn't even happen in the Ukraine. They actually happened in Iran or they're actually, they've shown, they're actually historic photos that have happened somewhere else. That doesn't mean that there's not war and there's bombs going off, but what the media are very good at is making, making things look worse than they are or actually showing you images to get you a response so you think that it's truth when it's actually not, not actually real. And so how do we know the truth? Well, Jesus did something amazing for us. He sent us the spirit of truth. He sent us the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of truth. So we can turn to him. We can say, Lord, you guide me. You lead me. You show me. You, you know, I pray, you know, I, I get a lot of information and I pray that I only, only see what I really need to see. Some stuff I don't really need to see. Some things I do need to see. But I and and, um, and I also don't want to look at stuff which has just been doctored up because it happens from both sides, and so I just I just pray, Lord, you show me, you show me what what's right, and, and and show me how to find out what's right. So it says, the Spirit of Truth who proceeds from the Father, He will testify of me and also bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. How's He going to bear witness through you and me? Amen. He's going to bear witness through you. And me, and so as you living your life, guided by the Holy Spirit, walking in the Spirit of Truth, that's going to bear witness to others who aren't walking in truth, who are walking according to this world, and it'll be a, a, a witness and a testimony to Jesus and to um, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, John sixteen verse one. I love this. These things I've spoken to you that you should not stumble. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't want to stumble. Amen. I want to stand upright, powering through, not stumbling through this. So the word of God is there. It says, then, then they'll put you in synagogues. Yes, the time will come. Listen to this. That whoever kills you will think that he offers God a service. Isn't that amazing? I mean, we've seen that before in, in other countries, religious wars where they believe what they're doing, even, even in the dark ages, even in the past, where Christians have been persecuted, that they believe they were doing it as a service to God. And so people will even um, will do things to you, believing that they're actually serving God by actually persecuting you. <laughs> Gone very quiet. <laughs> but it says, And these things they will do because they do not have... They have not known the Father nor me. Sounds like religion, amen? Because religion is not about a personal um, a, you know, relationship with Jesus. It's about doing religious activities and doing something where they think is pleasing to God, even if it means killing someone who has a relationship with God. Isn't that interesting? But it says, um, 
But these things I've told you so when the work time comes, you may remember that I told, told you of them. So you find yourself in that situation, you can go straight back to the Word of God. And you can say, Lord, you actually already told me that this was coming. And so you have prepared me for it and you've actually given me the answer for it. Amen. I mean, we look at Paul. Look at Paul, how many times he was dragged in front of kings and dragged in front of synagogues and threatened and told you're not allowed to preach and all these different things. What did he do? He was led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And like his attitude, this was his attitude. When he was in jail and he was chained to soldiers, it's like, no, 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 I'm not chained to them. They're chained to me. <laughs> they're not going anywhere. They have to listen to me preach the gospel because they can't go anywhere because they're chained to me. Amen. And so his attitude um, changed according to the word of God because he believed that all things work together for good for those who are called according. And even when he was in jail and even when he was persecuted, he used those for an occasion to be able to testament, to give a testimony. Look at when um, Paul and Silas were in jail and then an angel came and actually broke them out. And then that, the jailer and his whole household got saved. Amen? And so... No matter what we're facing or what we're, we're going to face, we, we can face it knowing that the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us in every situation and, and turn it around for good. Amen? And how we know that is because we can go back to the Word of God where he says, remember, I told you, when the time comes, remember, I told you that this is going to happen and, I'm, and I showed you how to make a way through it. Amen? Talk about preparation. Isn't that great preparation? I would so rather be able to hear that from the Lord than go, what is going on? You know, why is this guy trying to kill me? He's saying he's serving God and he's trying to kill me. You know, what's going on here? And he said, well, I remember I told you this is coming. Amen. Not good to know, but still, <laughs> it's good to be prepared. And then he says, these things I, I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. John 14, 26. So the help of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. That's even another step up. Not only will he um, give us a mouth of what to say and wisdom when we're actually, uh, you know, when we're actually in front of kings and you know, um, family or whatever, but he said, I will bring remembrance all the things that I've said to you. You know, the wonderful thing is, you know, when I... When I did Bible college um, back in 2006, I thought, how am I ever going to remember all this stuff? You know, I've done a year of learning. Uh, at the end of actually um, Bible college, I knew less than I did when I started. <laughs> and I thought, how am I going to remember? And then I found this scripture. I said, wow, that's amazing, God. More my responsibility is to actually feed on everything you said. And the Holy Spirit's responsibility is to bring it back to my remembrance. Isn't that amazing? So I, all, it's like a computer. I only just got to put the files in and he can actually draw the file out at the right time. But it, as you know, if you've ever gone looking for a file that you didn't save, <laughs> if it ain't in there, it's not, it, you can't get it out. And so our job is to feed on the Word of God um, and the Holy Spirit's job is actually to bring it back to our remembrance at that time. Amen. What a beautiful scripture that is. And then it goes on, but it even says, And peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives to you. Let not your heart be troubled, and neither let it be afraid. So we don't need to be afraid, amen? It, the Holy Spirit will bring things to our remembrance. He is the Prince of Peace. He's going to, even in the, you know, you know I, I tell you what's probably going to be the greatest testimony, is that in the middle of everything that is going on, that you're actually at peace. How much of a testimony is that going to be? When people are crazy, it's like, where am I going to, where am I going to get my food from? You know, like, oh, now the bees have got a mite on them. That means if the bees have got a mite on them, they're not going to be able to pollinate the flowers. If they can't pollinate the flowers, that means we're not going to have any fruit. We're not going to have any food. You know, I walk to the supermarket, there's no food. I try to get petrol. It's so, and, and you know what? You and I just go, hey, it's all right. Jesus is on the throne. We know where this is heading. We know that he's going to rule and reign this earth and he's actually going, he's the Prince of Peace and everything's going to be sweet. And in the meantime, he's left us the Holy Spirit to guide us until we get to that stage. So I'm good. I'm all good. <laughs> and you know what? That's going to be one of your greatest testimonies because people are going to be, 
How can you be like that? How can you just be, why haven't you seen? Didn't you see the news? Don't you know what's coming? And I'm like, yep, yeah, I've known what's coming since I was five years old. <laughs> and, and again, I keep going back to the source. I've, you know, I've, got, I've got a newspaper that, um, I, that I'm from the future that I've been reading all my life. <laughs> so I'm not surprised because um, I have a relationship with Jesus and Jesus has already told me what's coming. And so I don't need, it doesn't catch me by surprise. And not only that, he's actually given me a way to be able to cope and manage through it. Um, would you like to know all about that? <laughs> I believe it's going to be that simple, amen? I believe that our testimony and our witness uh, is going to be as simple as us living our lives according to the Holy Spirit, in peace, no matter what is going on, even in the midst of being persecuted by religious leaders, um, government authorities and friends, we can actually find peace and we can have words that don't even come from our head but come straight from the Holy Spirit and then just walk out and then they're left like, where did that come from? And like, well, I know where that came from because it didn't come from me. <laughs> Amen. That's exciting. Is that exciting? I think that's exciting because Jesus is saying, I'm letting you know what's coming, but I'm also giving you a way to be able to cope through it. So you don't, your heart doesn't need to be troubled and you don't need to be afraid. And then he goes on to say, you've heard from me and um, say to you, I'm going away and coming back. But if you love me, you would rejoice because I, I said, I'm going away from my father's greater than I. And now I've told you before it comes that when it comes to pass, you may believe. So I want to show you a scripture in um, Acts, which was um, in Acts chapter 1. I'm going to read from um, 1 through to 8, but there's this obscure little scripture that often gets glanced over. Um, but to me, it's actually quite important. So let's go from um, Acts 1 and verse 1. So the former account I made, O Theophilus, of that Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up, and after through the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the, the apostles whom he had chosen, and to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Verse 4, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You've heard from me, for John truly baptised with water, but you shall be baptised with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Now this is the scripture we often just glance over. Therefore, when they'd come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Okay, interesting. So it seems out of place. He's talking about, you know, the, the Holy Spirit's coming and the promise of the Father and everything that I told you. Yeah, he's about to go. Yeah, he's talking about the stuff that's to come, but he's about to go. And they're very conscious that he's about to go. And so um, we'll talk about, I'll continue and then we'll talk about this. So then verse 7, so he said to them, it's not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So let's go to the next slide. Um, so this is what they're basically asking, and it's the same question we ask today. When... Are you coming for us? And when will your kingdom reign on this earth? That's what they were asking him. Because they knew the Messiah was coming. But they knew that the Messiah was also... They've seen all the scriptures that he's going to rule and reign. That he would reign from Jerusalem. That he would be king of all the earth. They knew all that. And so if he truly is the Messiah, and then you know, they knew that he was by all the things he did, but now he's going... So then they're like, okay, it's good that you're telling us about the Holy Spirit and everything, but aren't you going to, yeah, you know, when's this going to happen? When are you going to rule and reign? When, when, is, when are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And look at his response. He says, first of all, he says, not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his authority. Well, he did actually tell them to look at times and seasons, but he's actually talking about something very, very specific. He's talking about exactly when Jesus would come and rule and reign on this earth, when he would take the church and when he'd rule and reign. And he said, only the Father knows that. 
as, we, as we've seen through the Galilean wedding. We know that that's actually up to the Father. So he said it's not... So even with the wedding, they could see the signs. They knew the betrothal. They knew that you know, the, the son had gone away to, 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 to build a house. They knew that, that it was coming up, but they didn't know exactly the day that he was actually coming. And neither did the son, either because it was totally up to the Father. So they're asking him, when is this going to happen? Like we are, <laughs> you know. We see the signs and everything going on, but when's it going to happen? And I love his response because this is what he says. He says, it's not for you to know the times which have been put in the Father's authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Amen? In other words, it's not up to you to know exactly the time that's going to happen, but in the meantime, I'm going to give you something to help you until that time comes. Amen? Amen. Until the time comes when, because obviously there's no need for the Holy Spirit and witnessing once we're actually there. But he says, I'm actually, there's something I'm going to give you. And that's what I'm focusing on at the moment. I'm focusing on giving you the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father, everything that you're going to need. And, and we've read scriptures that he actually said to them, you know, I'm sending you the Holy Spirit. He's the one that's going to bring you peace. He's the one who's going to be able to tell you what to say when you stand in front of kings and everything. That's what's going on here. So for us, while we're waiting, while we're saying, Lord, when are you coming? You know, we see the signs. We see this all starting to ramp up. We see what's going on. We see the birth pangs. We, 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 we see what's happening. And in the meantime, when, you know, when you were to ask Jesus right now, well, when are you coming? He'd say, guess what? I've given you the Holy Spirit. <laughs> That's his answer. Amen? That's his answer. Because he can't even tell you the day he's coming for his bride because that's left with the Father. But what he can tell you is that I gave you something to help you navigate these times until the time when I come and it's the precious Holy Spirit. Amen? And um, so when Jesus said that, there's a couple of things you've got to understand what was happening for the emotional state of the disciples at the time. They'd lost Jesus. I'm sure when Jesus said, you know, it's a good thing that I'd go, I'm sure they said, no, it's, no, it's not. <laughs> and he said, no, it's good that i go, because then they go, he had, I bet you he didn't even get the Holy Spirit out. Is it? It's a good thing I'd go, because no, it's not. <laughs> but he said, it's good that I go, because I'm sending you the Holy Spirit, who will be there with you 24-7, you know, all the time. But got to understand let's let's think about where they were at at the time the emotional state they'd lost, lost jesus and then he came back again so remember when they lost him they thought he, that was it they and 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 he'd actually given them 16 different ways of telling them that he'd actually wrote that he would rise again while he was with them and when he did rise again none of them were there at the tomb the women were you know, but they weren't there and they had to come back and tell them so they were in this emotional state that we've lost Jesus. Then, then he comes back and, and um, he's seen by them. But now they're going to lose him again. <laughs> because they're standing on a mountain and he's about to go and say, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. So they lost him once, they're about to lose him again. You know, you know, because they didn't quite get it the first time, I'm sure when he was around, they didn't quite get it the second time. They're like, oh, he's back, good. We can just continue where we left off. And, and there was, but he knew it was only for so time, last time. The other thing, they were being pursued by Romans and religious leaders, so they were hiding in rooms. They were persecuted. You know, very thing that Jesus says will happen and, and will happen in intensity before the Great Tribulation, because it's in Luke 21. What what happened is that they were actually, in a lot of ways, where where the, our world was heading. They were being per persecuted by the Romans, the the leaders at the time, and they were being persecuted by the religious leaders. And so they were on the run. Now that Jesus has died, they're coming for us. And so they were meeting in, in uh, rooms behind locked doors. Um, after three years of Jesus' ministry, there were only 121, 120 disciples. How do you think that felt for them? You know, they're probably thinking, you know, we haven't got many of us, and a lot of them had scattered. They faced um, Peter denying Christ, but they'd also dispersed. And when Jesus was on trial... And um, there would be, be a, a feeling of shame. So, you know, like, they, 
interesting enough, you know, we, we give Peter a hard time, but Peter and John were the only ones who actually were there when Jesus was being trialled. The, the others went. And John had some relationship with priests because he managed to get, get into the inner part. And that's where they saw Peter and they said, oh, he, he was with him. But, the, but, you know, like, we give Peter a hard time for denying them, but the others, in a way, denied him as well because they all took off. <laughs> so he was at least went in closer to... And um, mind you, when he got baptised in the Holy Spirit, the same people he denied Jesus to, he actually preached the sermon of his life and 3,000 got saved. Um, some had gone back to their old professions. They faced the fact that Judas... Now, even think of this emotionally. Judas had been with them for three years and the fact that he betrayed Jesus and now had committed suicide, you know, how they would have felt about that. That You know, they, we often sort of don't get into how emotionally they would have been feeling at the time. That, you know, this guy who was actually, we walked with, actually t turned around and betrayed. How could he do that? And now he's actually committed suicide after doing that. And they just wanted to know when he would return and be king over the whole world and reigning from Jerusalem. That's what they wanted to know. <laughs> While Jesus was saying, the Holy Spirit's coming, he's going, yeah, yeah, that's good. But when he come, when he can restore everything, if you want us to go into all the world and preach the gospel, be easier if you're ruling and reigning from Jerusalem. <laughs> and he said, well, I can't tell you when this is going to happen, but I can tell you this, I'm giving you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's going to testify of me. He's actually going to bring all the words that I've actually said to you back to your remembrance. And don't even try to work out what to say when you're actually standing in front of rulers because the Holy Spirit will actually give you the words to say. And I will be there with you through the Holy Spirit and I will lead you and guide you until the day that I actually come back for you. Amen? <laughs> so... How is the kingdom of God going to start being established on the earth by witnessing in the power of the Holy Spirit? How are we going to cope with the emotional challenges of life by Jesus sending us the comforter, counsellor, advocate, intercessor and strengthen and stand by? So let's go to the next screen. So um, this is John 16 in the Amplified Bible. He said, however, I'm telling you nothing but the truth when I say it is profitable good, expedient and advantageous for you that I go away. Because if I do not go away, then the comforter, counsellor, helper, advocate, intercessor, uh, strengthener and standby will not come to you into close fellowship with you. But if I go away, I will send him to you to be in close fellowship with you. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Everything that the Holy Spirit is, he will... When, so if you put that, how are we going to cope while we're actually waiting for Jesus to come? Well, he's going to comfort us. In the midst of everything that's going on, he's going to comfort us. He's going to counsel us. He's going to help us, guide us in truth and know which is the way to go and which is not to go. He's going to help us in every situation that we find ourselves in. The parakletos, the one that walks beside, he's actually going to be our helpmate. He's going to be our advocate. He's going to stand up for us. He's going to be our intercessor. So that when whatever we're going through, even before we get that, he's intercessing to the Father. He's going to strengthen us, giving us give us the strength. You know, as we looked um, a couple of weeks ago, that, that word actually is dunamis. It's the dunamis power that um, Sarah re received strength to actually bear the child of promise. And actually that word strength means dunamis. That dunamis power will actually fortify you and give you the strength to be able to keep going. Amen? And he will stand by you, the Paracletos. He'll be right beside you. And he will be in close fellowship with you because Jesus sent him to do all those things. And then the rest is history. Acts 2 and everything that they did in the midst of persecution, in the midst of the emotional state they were in, you know, the Holy Spirit just moved and the gospel was spread and it was... A, um, yeah, a testimony to the power of the Holy Spirit through their lives. Amen? Amen. So Lord, we just thank you, Lord God, that your answer for us in these times is the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the precious Holy Spirit that you've given us. And Lord God, we can easily, Lord, get overwhelmed at everything that's going on. But Lord, you said that we're to have peace, that our hearts would not be troubled. Lord, that our hearts would not faint. 
Lord God, because you sent us the Holy Spirit to be able to navigate through the days ahead until you come and take us to be with you as your bride and then back to actually rule and reign on this earth. So we thank you, Lord God. We look forward to the witness that we can be, Lord, just by living our very lives, Lord God, walking with the Holy Spirit that you've given us and been led by the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of truth. And we thank you so much, Lord, for sending the precious Holy Spirit that is with us and helps us in our everyday lives. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Yes, God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah.